Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Chua with Puente Hills Eye Care. Did you know that macular degeneration is the leading cause of vision loss and blindness in people age 65 and older? In this video, I'm going to help you protect your vision. I'll review the most effective ways to prevent macular degeneration naturally. And when I say natural, that means I won't be discussing prescription medications, no pills, no surgeries. Those are all off limits for this video. We're going to be talking lifestyle, things like diet, exercise, and other things you can change to significantly decrease your risk of developing the terrible disease that age-related macular degeneration or AMD is. And stick around until the end of the video because I'll also discuss a way that you can test yourself at home for early signs of macular degeneration. Before we discuss these tips, let's first review what macular degeneration is, what causes it, and how it can affect your vision. This is a cross-section of the eye. Incoming light first passes through the cornea or the transparent front surface of the eye and then the lens, which helps to focus light onto the retina. The retina is a layer of tissue which lines the back of the eye. It takes the incoming light signals and sends them along the optic nerve to the visual cortex in the brain, allowing us to see. The macula is a central area of the retina and is responsible for our central vision. Let's get a close-up of the macula so we can see what macular degeneration looks like. In one form of macular degeneration, called dry macular degeneration, yellow deposits of cellular debris accumulate under the macula. These deposits are called drusen. This is a retinal photo of a patient with AMD. Here you can see the yellow drusen scattered throughout the macula. With time, drusen can grow in both number and size, which can lead to problems with your central vision. In wet macular degeneration, abnormal blood vessels grow into the macula. These blood vessels are leaky and can leak fluid and blood into the retina, causing severe distortion of vision. Most people with macular degeneration, about 85%, have the dry form of macular degeneration, but about 15% can progress to the wet form. Patients with dry macular degeneration may notice blurring of central vision. In patients with wet macular degeneration, the fluid from leaky blood vessels can make straight lines appear wavy, while also causing significant blurring of central vision. And this loss of central vision has a huge effect on quality of life. That central vision is so vital to the things we do every day, like reading, watching TV, or even seeing our loved ones' faces. So I think it is super important to think about the natural ways we can protect our vision from macular degeneration. Now that we understand what macular degeneration is, let's review the best ways to prevent it. One of the easiest ways to prevent macular degeneration is to add more green leafy vegetables to your diet. This is because green leafy vegetables such as kale, spinach, romaine lettuce, as well as other foods such as corn and bell peppers contain high concentrations of lutein and zeaxanthine. Lutein and zeaxanthine are what are referred to as macular carotenoids. Carotenoids are the specially orange, yellow, and red colored pigments produced by plants and algae and are responsible for their characteristic colors. For example, lutein is the yellow pigment responsible for giving corn its bright yellow color. Carotenoids such as lutein and zeaxanthine are incredibly important for a few reasons. First, humans are completely unable to produce these vitamins ourselves. We just don't have the proteins or machinery to make lutein or zeaxanthine. So the only way we can get it into our bodies and ultimately into our eyes is through our diet. Second, lutein and zeaxanthine have been shown in multiple studies to perform many critical tasks in the eye and more specifically in the retina. The retina performs an incredible function. It takes all the light in our environment and then it converts those light signals into electricity. That electrical message then gets sent to the brain where it gets interpreted into the visual world we see every day. And this process of converting light into electricity costs a lot of energy. In fact, the retina has the highest rate of blood flow per volume in the entire body. That's because that blood is carrying a constant supply of nutrition and oxygen to the retina. And the retina is using it all up to perform its critical tasks of allowing us to see. Not only is the blood delivering nutrients to the retina, but it's also carrying all these trash and waste products away. As the cells in the retina use up energy, they produce waste products in the form of reactive oxidative species. If there's nothing cleaning up and washing away these reactive oxidative species, this toxic waste can accumulate in the retina and cause all sorts of damage, including macular degeneration. You could think of lutein and zeaxanthine as the garbage men in the retina. They are antioxidants and they help pick up and take away all of those oxidative waste products to keep retinal cells healthy. Studies have found that there are very high concentrations of lutein and zeaxanthine in the retina, and particularly in the macula. We need large concentrations of these antioxidants, such as lutein in the macula, to help clean up all of those oxidative trash produced by the retinal cells, which are 
very metabolically active. Another important function of lutein and zeaxanthine is that they serve as natural blue light filters to protect our retina from potentially harmful blue light. You can watch my video here on why I think blue light blocking glasses are a waste of your money. But one of the reasons why we don't really need blue blocking glasses is because we already have built-in blue light filters in our retina. It's the lutein present in our retinal cells. So now we understand. Lutein and zeaxanthine are important antioxidants for protecting our retina from oxidative damage. And since we can't produce them on our own, we need to eat vegetables to get them into our body. The majority of our knowledge on the importance of key vitamins and nutrients on the development and progression of macular degeneration is based on the age-related eye disease study, or ARED study for short. In one part of this study, they took 4,519 research participants and asked them how often they ate certain foods such as fish, fruits, and vegetables. They then followed these subjects for six years to see if there was a link between diet and the risk of developing macular degeneration. They split up the patients into five groups based on how much lutein and zeaxanthine they ate. They found that patients who consumed the most lutein and zeaxanthine through their diet about 2,000 micrograms per day had a 35% decreased odds of having wet AMD and a 27% decreased odds of having intermediate to severe AMD compared with patients who consumed the least amount of lutein and zeaxanthine in their diet. The researchers looked at other nutrients such as vitamin A, retinol, and vitamin C, but those were not found to have a significant effect on macular degeneration risk. It was the lutein and zeaxanthine consumption which really moved the needle. So how can we supercharge our diet to increase our lutein or zeaxanthine intake? It's simple, aim for half a cup of cooked spinach or kale a day. This is a table which reviews some of the foods with the highest amounts of lutein and zeaxanthine. You can see half a cup of kale contains 11.9 milligrams of lutein, and half a cup of cooked spinach gets you about 10.2 milligrams. Just a half cup of these green leafy vegetables per day can help you get that optimal amount of lutein and zeaxanthine that you need to prevent macular degeneration. The next way you can naturally prevent AMD is to increase your intake of fish. In this study from Harvard in 2018, researchers found that research subjects who consumed several servings of fish per week had a 40% decreased risk of having AMD compared to those who consumed almost no fish at all. This finding has been repeated in several other research studies and after analyzing all of them together, on average, consumption of one to two servings of fish per week decreased the odds of developing late macular degeneration by 50% over 10 years of follow-up. Fish is known to be rich in omega-3 fatty acids, which have been thought to provide a protective effect of AMD. What results from research on omega-3 supplements on AMD risk have been mixed. Some studies say that omega-3 supplements help, while some others show that they don't really make a difference. At this time, I truly don't know whether omega-3 supplements by themselves significantly affect AMD risk, but it's very possible that fish may have other nutrients or vitamins beyond omega-3 fatty acids that can help to decrease AMD risk. And given the consistency of the results of fish intake on lowering AMD risk, I recommend aiming for one or two servings of fish per week. The next lifestyle change you can make to decrease your risk of age-related macular degeneration is to lose weight if you are overweight. This study examined patients' weight and investigated whether there was a risk between body weight and risk of macular degeneration. They used a measurement called the body mass index, which factors in both your height and weight to evaluate whether you're overweight or not. BMIs greater than 30 are considered obese and BMIs from 20 to 25 are considered normal. The researchers found that patients with a BMI of 30 or greater were twice as likely to have progression of macular degeneration compared to patients who had BMIs less than 25 and this finding has been backed up by other studies. This study from 2016 reviewed all the previous studies investigating the link between obesity and macular degeneration, and they found that patients with obesity had a 32% increased risk of developing severe macular degeneration compared to those of normal body weight. There are two leading theories on why obesity can increase risk of AMD, and they both have to do with the amount of fat or adipose tissue that our bodies are carrying. The first hypothesis is that increased fat tissue stimulates the release of pro-inflammatory messengers such as monocyte chemoattractant protein 1 or MCP1 and tumor necrosis factor alpha, TNF alpha, which have been shown to affect the inflammatory and immune systems in our retina and contribute to the retinal changes that we see in AMD. The next thought is that those important nutrients we discussed earlier, lutein and zeaxanthine, are actually fat soluble meaning that they can be stored inside fat tissue. As body weight increases, our body holds on to more fat tissue, 
And that precious lutein and zeaxanthin, which helps provide protection against AMD, instead of being stored in our retina, is going to be stored in the fat tissue throughout the body instead. So it might actually be more accurate to say that it's not body weight per se that increases the risk of developing AMD, but rather body fat percentage. The problem is though that calculating exact body fat percentage on thousands of research subjects in a study at several time points can be difficult. It usually involves either using skin calipers or detailed body circumference measurements. Since body weight and BMI is much more easy to measure and quantify for research studies, they can serve as a crude proxy for body fat percentage. If you wanna check your body mass index or your BMI at home, you can Google BMI calculator, choose the first result, Put in your height and weight and it'll tell you your BMI right away. I know losing weight is much easier said than done, but it comes down to consistency and persistence. I recommend 30 minutes a day of exercise such as brisk walking, jogging or swimming five times a week and a diet full of whole foods. That means fresh fruits and vegetables, nuts, seeds, beans and fish. You want to avoid prepared and ready to eat foods processed foods, and foods with added sugars as much as possible. They might be more convenient, but they are loaded with additives, artificial ingredients, sugar, and other trash that will wreak havoc on your body and your eyes in the long term. The next lifestyle change you can make to prevent macular degeneration is to avoid smoking and to stop smoking if you are a smoker. Cigarette smoke has been shown in multiple studies to significantly increase the risk of developing AMD. Patients who smoke have at least double the risk of developing macular degeneration compared to patients who don't smoke. Cigarette smoke has several toxic compounds that cause damage to your blood vessels and your eyes. Cigarette smoke also causes inflammation and increases the amount of those dangerous oxidative compounds that we discussed earlier. So if you smoke or someone in your household smokes, now is the time to quit. The next thing you can do to help prevent macular degeneration is to know your family's history. It's well known now that macular degeneration has a large genetic component. One study from the UK found that patients who had a parent with AMD were 27.8 times more likely to have AMD, while those with a sibling who had macular degeneration were 12 times more likely. To have AMD. That is a staggering increase in risk based on genetics alone, almost 28 times more likely just by having a parent with the disease. Now, I get it. Unfortunately, there's nothing you can do to change your family history of AMD and the risk associated with it, but you can still make a difference if you know your family history. If you have a relative with macular degeneration, you need to see an ophthalmologist to get examined for early signs of macular degeneration. That's because multiple studies have shown that earlier detection and treatment for AMD improves visual outcomes for patients. So if you already know that you have an increased risk for macular degeneration from a positive family history, you would benefit greatly from earlier detection of the disease. The next thing you can do to prevent AMD naturally is to use an AMSR grid at home. Now, home monitoring in general is an important habit because it lets us know how our body is doing in between doctor's visits. Patients with diabetes often check their blood sugar at home and patients with hypertension check their blood pressure at home. That way, if your blood pressure or blood sugar is too high, you'll be able to know right away and let your doctor know about it instead of having to wait a few months to go to your doctor's appointment for measurements and lab testing. So we have all of these ways to quantify and measure how our body is doing at home. But what about home monitoring for our eyes? The cheapest and simplest way to check for signs of macular degeneration at home is to use an AMSA grid. An AMSA grid is a square shaped grid and how you use it is you put it up maybe on a wall or on the fridge or you can hold it about a foot away from you. Then you stare at the center dot one eye at a time. Patients with dry AMD and drusen in the center of the retina may see blurring of central vision. And patients with wet macular degeneration who have fluid in the central retina may notice that the lines appear wavy. This is called metamorphopsia and may be a sign that you have new bleeding or swelling in the retina. If you see new blurring, darkening, or metamorphopsia on the Amster grid, that's a sign to call your ophthalmologist to see them right away. That way, you can receive the appropriate testing and treatment as soon as possible to give yourself the best chance at saving your vision. Okay, so that was a comprehensive review of the natural ways you can prevent macular degeneration. In summary, the best ways to prevent AMD are eat more green leafy vegetables, aim for half a cup of kale or half a cup of cooked spinach per day to increase your lutein and zeaxanthin intake, increase your consumption of fish, 
aim for one to two servings of fish per week. Try to lose weight and decrease your body fat percentage, especially if you have a BMI over 30. Don't smoke and know your family history of macular degeneration and make sure to get an eye checkup if you do have a family history. And lastly, you can use an Amster grid at home to check yourself for visual changes for macular degeneration. I think that's enough information for this video. But if you find this video helpful, please give us a like and subscribe for more updates. And if you're in the Los Angeles, Orange County, or Inland Empire area and would like an eye exam or maybe to get checked for macular degeneration, feel free to visit our website or give us a call to make an appointment today. And if you made it to the end of this video, that probably means that you're really interested in eye health and have the motivation to improve and preserve your vision. You can watch my video here to learn more about the best ways to prevent glaucoma. I'm Dr. Michael Chua with Puente Hills Eye Care. See you next time.